Tonight, growing concern as police investigate another violent assault on a Saskatoon transit bus. Also, hundreds of people gather to walk for Red Dress Day ahead of the day on Sunday. I truly love you. Plus, saying goodbye to a titan. Family, friends and Rider Nation remembers Jim Hobson. This is CBC Saskatchewan News. It is Friday, May 3rd, and the CBC Saskatchewan News starts right now. Good evening and thank you for watching. Police are investigating another violent assault that happened on a Saskatoon transit bus. This time, an 18-year-old man was stabbed and sent to hospital. As Ashwarya Duda reports, the incident is highlighting a growing problem. The local bus union says recent violence on Saskatoon Transit is indicative of a larger trend. The latest attack happened here on Broadway Avenue on a bus Wednesday evening. It started with an argument between two people and ended with one man being stabbed. The suspect took off and the victim is believed to be in a stable situation. Transit users say they don't feel safe. There's definitely been a lot of problems with violence lately. I, I wasn't here uh, for the stabbing, but I do remember uh, having to hide out in the at library over there because there was a there were some people running around with BB guns and shooting at people and the bus. The bus driver had to call the ambulance because the first because somebody OD'd. M more security might help, but what about the underlying issues? I don't have a quick, I don't have an easy answer for that. Now I do feel a bit more scared with the recent stabbing. Although it wasn't really the first like bus violent incident that I've heard about. The Saskatoon Fire Department is taking over the ongoing community support program that will hopefully make things safer. There will be 12 community safety officers, including six new hires that will patrol buses and high incident routes. This will be in addition to patrols already taking place in downtown, on Broadway, in Sutherland and Riverdale areas. How do we increase um, working together with all the complex needs that are happening in our community? And um, one of the things we're doing, and it'll be an ongoing program, is the community safety officers are coming to work with the fire department. She says that CSOs can get involved if a person is agitated or upset. They're trained in de-escalation and understand what people might need in vulnerable situations. Five years ago, there were about 11 incidents on transit in Saskatoon. That includes physical verbal assaults, intoxication. By 2021, that number was up to 142. This year, there's already been 124 incidents just in four months. Now, the union says that the nature of these assaults is also getting worse. Drivers are scared to go to work. It's calling for zero tolerance for violence on buses and against drivers. Ashwarya Duda, CBC News, Saskatoon. A high-profile murder case in North Battleford is finally over. Ten people charged with Tiki Laverdeer have been sentenced. Her remains were found outside North Battleford in 2019. The investigation covered two provinces, nine crime scenes, and interviews with more than 120 witnesses. Dan Zakreski brings us the story. Her name is Tiki Lavadier, and it took almost five years to get to the bottom of what happened to her. And it was bad. She was kidnapped, tortured, and murdered. Ten people had a role in her kidnapping and death. The facts of what happened are in these court documents, and they can now be made public because all ten have been sentenced. It happened in April 2019 when Laverdeer traveled from Edmonton to North Battleford for a friend's funeral. He had been murdered two weeks earlier. He's pictured here with his mother, Nicole Cook. She and Laverdeer were drinking and doing drugs for two days after the funeral as Laverdeer tried unsuccessfully to catch a ride home to Edmonton. At some point, Cook believed that Laverdeer had some knowledge about who killed her son. So Cook's family, friends and local gang members held Laverdeer hostage and tortured her for information. She was beaten and burned and forced to march between different houses well tied up. 
Laverdeer was ultimately killed and her body dumped outside of North Battleford. Three months later, Cook made a public plea for information, speaking to CBC about Laverdeer's death. It's awful what's happening out there to these young people. And it's, it's not fair, you know. It's not fair at all. They didn't even get to live their life. What followed was one of the largest homicide investigations in Saskatchewan and an overwhelming number of court appearances for the family. I can't fathom this, why it took, it's all these people for my innocent, big-hearted, beautiful daughter. Like, I can't understand it. Nicole Cook pleaded guilty to manslaughter. Other convictions ranged from first-degree murder to kidnapping. In a statement, Lavadier's family said they'll never have closure for what happened. Dan Zakreski, CBC News, Saskatoon. Hundreds of people came out in Regina today for a walk to honour missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. Participants say it's important to come together to support those who've been impacted and to try to heal. We all know someone, have someone um, who has um, a missing or murdered loved one. Um, and they're just, just to know that they're not alone, I think that's really key. Um, and know that their spirit not only physically supported, but spiritually supported. This is more about the community. It's about our collective healing. And that's what this walk is really about, as um, that collective healing. So we be began this morning with um, a pipe ceremony at 8.30. And um, those collective prayers will carry out throughout the day. And hopefully this wonderful rain weather will help us um, um, with that healing process. And that water is healing for us. So that's what we're hoping to have happen today. I lived probably in 20 houses in this in this area growing up and throughout my life and to not forget where we come from and not lose sight of who matters in our community which is our young people and our women uh, is very important to me and to see the amount of people here today that shows that our community is uniting around those same uh, morals or values. I had an auntie who traveled the country and she was almost taken so it was a really scary time for us because we didn't know like like if she was going to be okay but she's thankfully and fortunately like okay now but like it's a very real and like scary thing and just walking this earth as like an as an indigenous woman like it could happen to anybody. It breaks my heart for all of the hundreds and thousands of families out there that are wanting their loved ones looked for and unfortunately the your background the color of your skin to determine whether or not you're valued by the system i have two young beautiful daughters who are beautiful indigenous girls uh, and also a grandmother now of two girls and unfortunately they have experienced uh, quite a bit of a helicopter mom and needing to know where they are all hours of the night and it makes it hard for them to uh, to be young women um, because of my fear. It's not that I don't trust them, it's the world that I don't trust. I have to teach them things that maybe other, other moms don't have to teach their, their young daughters um, by just because they have long, beautiful brown hair and are, are indigenous that they are a target. And uh, that's always been in my mind since, since they were born. Students at the University of Regina will soon pay more for their tuition. Tuition and fees are going up by 4% in the 2024-25 school year. It's the latest in a series of tuition increases, and the school blames inflationary pressure. A domestic student's tuition has jumped by 55% between 2013 and 2023, and students are concerned. I think that education should be a right a right where like all the students should be able to receive education in a free way and I understand that provide uh, a quality education can cost but it shouldn't be that expensive. The upcoming school year marks the last year of a multi-year funding agreement between the U of R and the provincial government. The school says it's working with the province to craft a new deal. Nearly 17,000 people are enrolled as students at the U of R. 
A celebration of life was held in Regina this afternoon in honour of Jim Hobson. The former president and CEO of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders died last month at the age of 73 after a battle with cancer. And while there were many tears, there were a lot of laughs too. Another one of our favourite haunts was the Dollarama. And uh, there, was, there was one right near to us, so we frequented there quite a bit. And uh, you know when you're in the beginning of a relationship, you spend a lot of time picking out that right card, and even we weren't afraid to buy a Hallmark card that cost seven bucks at that time. But as the relationship evolved, we would, on a special occasion, we'd go to Dollarama, and we would each pick out a bunch of cards that we'd like to give one another, and we would exchange the cards, sitting or standing in Dollarama, read the cards, and then we would put them back on the shelf. <laughs> As Jim's journey was coming to an end, the cards you picked, that we picked for one another became more and more important. The last birthday card he gave me this past December, I'll treasure forever. My last birthday card to him, his birthday was March 1st this year. My husband, my everything, when we first met, it was obvious how funny you were. And then I learned behind all that funny is a guy with a great heart. A guy who really thinks about what other people need. A guy who would, be, who would do whatever's necessary to take care of his family. And a guy I couldn't love or laugh without. I love you. Happy birthday. Love you forever and always be. And he was so happy they came from the Dollarama. The celebration of life was held at the Conexus Art Centre. The speakers were all hand chosen by Hobson himself, including his wife and children. Hobson grew up in Regina playing football at Tom Collegiate, the U of R, and then joined the Riders' O-line in 1973. In 1976, he left the game to focus on teaching. But in 2004, he applied to be the Riders' first ever president and CEO. Under his leadership, the Riders won Grey Cups in 2007 and 2013, and he stayed at the helm until 2015. Hobson was inducted into the Canadian Football Hall of Fame in 2019. He was diagnosed with colon cancer in 2021 and died on April 2nd. You know, golfers are just itching to get out when they'll hit the course, even when it's raining. These guys were out this morning at the Royal Regina Golf Course. You can see the rain is helping that grass, that grass green up nicely. And the bit of sun we're expecting this weekend should do the same. Riley Lechuk will have more on your weekend forecast after the break. Stay with us. Spring means nesting season in the wild, and it's also a time when more young animals need rescuing. David Gilson has more from the Alberta Institute for Wildlife Conservation. In addition to the wildlife currently under its care, the Institute says it can see a 500% increase in baby birds and animals coming into its clinic between the end of April and mid-June. Staff say they've already received a baby fox, but ad patients can range from waterfowl to songbirds and various mammals. Spokesperson Scotty Potter says many that come into their care are orphaned after parents are injured or killed. That can be due to car accidents, um, attacks from uh, cats and domestic dogs, um, anything like, e even something like a, a parent bird hitting a barbed wire fence. So these sorts of uh, issues are often the result of human conflict in some way. They say they appreciate the public's help and recommend people call their wildlife hotline with any questions and concerns. They're also reminding people who spot solitary baby hares this time of year that they are often still under their mother's care and don't need to be rescued. To help with increasing patient care costs, the Institute recently launched its annual Wildlife Baby Shower Fundraiser. Dave Gilson, CBC News, near Madden. The weather update is brought to you by Capital GMC Buick Cadillac. New Truck Trade Up is on now. Well, live look now at the Broadway Bridge in Saskatoon. It looks sunny ish there, but it was another soggy day in parts of the province. Our weather specialist, Riley Laidchuk, joins me now with a look at your forecast. Well, Sam, another wet day for uh, much of southern and central parts of the province, albeit not as wet as the last couple of days have been. 
Still below seasonal in terms of temperatures uh, for this time of the year, only getting up to eight degrees in both Regina and Saskatoon. Five was uh, where we got to in Swift Current today. Temperatures for this time of the year should be up at about 16, 17 degrees. So a bit cool, but we will see temperatures warming up as we get into the weekend. So looking at satellite radar through the afternoon here, we have seen uh, some rain still moving along sort of that Highway 11 corridor between Regina and Saskatoon. And even some heavier pockets uh, back to the east through uh, the Mooseman region and areas to the south, seeing a, a few heavy pockets of rain through the afternoon. We will start to see that kind of taper off as we get into the evening hours tonight. So uh, looking at the next couple of days, by the time we get to 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, a totally different story. We're back into sunshine for the most part with a few clouds still hanging around south and central and even a chance of uh, some rain showers uh, through the Battlefords region. Uh, Kindersley, Saskatoon could pick up uh, a few more scattered showers through the day tomorrow, but otherwise we're looking at mainly sunny skies really across the province as we get through your Saturday and really clearing out as we get through the later part of Saturday, especially in to Sunday, we're looking at mainly sunny skies really for uh, the bulk of the day. But things do change once we get past Sunday, and I'll talk about that in just a little bit here. Uh, looking at rainfall to come, I guess, over the next uh, 48 hours or so here, we're looking at Trace to a couple of millimeters, if that, through uh, central parts of the province. Saskatoon, oh, maybe only a couple more millimeters and some showers. Yes, maybe a few more millimeters uh, coming to the eastern parts. We have seen some heavier pockets of rain uh, through the day. So uh, waking up right around the freezing mark once again uh, through Regina and Saskatoon, both at one first thing in the morning. Uh, three in Kindersley to start the day tomorrow. Larange at two. Uh, we'll see temperatures warm up a bit as we get through the day tomorrow to something a little bit more seasonal before dropping to uh, something that maybe is a, a little bit more cool <laughs> once again to start Sunday. Temperatures uh, close to that freezing mark uh, once again. Wanted to touch on visibility quickly because we could see uh, some lower visibility and some fog especially rolling through the province tonight with a lot of that damp and that moist air really creating good conditions for some fog. So stopping here Saturday at 6 o'clock in the morning, visibility in Regina and Assiniboia down to about 300 meters uh, first thing in the morning. So doesn't mean it's going to be foggy everywhere, but we could see uh, some pockets of uh, dense fog uh, if you have some travel plans uh, first thing in the morning that does start to dissipate uh, as we get into the day uh, on Saturday. So we're uh, aiming for a high of 12 in Regina tomorrow. Maybe a few scattered showers yet to come. 19 for Sunday, mainly sunny skies, and then more precipitation rolls through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and we're looking at a high of 19 for Friday. For Saskatoon, maybe a few scattered showers first thing as well. The sunnier day is Sunday at 18 degrees. And Sam, yes, another 10 to 20 millimeters coming by the time we start next week. Welcome back. Police have arrested three men in the death of a prominent BC Sikh activist. They're accused of shooting Hardeep Singh Nijur outside a temple in Surrey last June. The murder on Canadian soil led to a major diplomatic rift between Canada and India. Kate McKenna has more. Today we are here to announce significant developments about the investigation into the murder, the murder of Hardeep Singh Nijur. Nearly a year after the death of Sikh separatist Hardeep Singh Nijjar, three arrests. Karen Preet Singh, Kamal Preet Singh and Karan Brar are facing conspiracy and first-degree murder charges. But the RCMP says the investigation isn't over. There are separate and distinct investigations ongoing into these matters, certainly not limited to the involvement of the people arrested today. And these efforts include investigating connections to the government of India. The 45-year-old man was shot dead last June. Sources tell CBC News the men arrested today were part of an alleged hit squad. They're all Indian nationals. At least two came to Canada on student visas. Sources say police are also investigating possible links to three other killings on Canadian soil. His family and associates were told this morning. They're uh, a bit relieved uh, and uh, like as in that there's some progress made and some arrests made at this moment. Um, it's very emotional as well, uh, losing your father in a violent way that they, they did and losing your husband or your son for their elderly parents. Um, so there's some relief, but there's a lot of uh, questions still. Many of those questions around India's involvement. Mr. Speaker, today I'm rising to inform the House of an extremely serious matter. Last September, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau made international news when he accused India of being involved in the assassination. Over the past number of weeks, Canadian security agencies have been actively pursuing 
credible allegations of a potential link between agents of the government of India and the killing of a Canadian citizen, Hardeep Singh Nijar. The Indian government has denied it ordered extrajudicial killings. The country's foreign minister has called the allegation absurd. Kate McKenna, CBC News, Ottawa. Here's a look at your provincial forecast for your Saturday, and we're looking at sunnier conditions, although we could see some scattered showers first thing, uh, especially through uh, Saskatoon and Regina. I think that's a fairly slim chance. We'll see uh, most of that clearing out even by the time we hit the lunch hour tomorrow, warming up to 14s and 15s uh, through, the eastern, uh, through the western side of the province, Kindersley and Maple Creek, with a few showers still hanging on through eastern sections, Yorkton getting to 12 degrees uh, tomorrow. So Regina, we're looking at a wake-up temperature of around 2 tomorrow. Mainly cloudy, could see a few sprinkles throughout the day and by the time we hit late afternoon, 10 degrees, still a little bit below normal, but getting closer to normal. Best chance maybe for some showers first thing in the morning in Saskatoon and Sam, we're uh, looking at sunnier conditions for Sunday, so still a little bit of cloud hanging around for tomorrow. Thanks, Riley. Many restaurants have switched to paper straws since the federal government moved to ban single-use plastics. But one Saskatchewan MP says that's mis misguided and he's pushing back. Jenny Whitfield reports. Paper straws are used everywhere these days, but not everyone's a fan. Oh my gosh, I love this drink. Yeah. I think they put like caramel in here. It's so good. Mm, you should try it. You should definitely try it. Here, take it. Try some. Thank you so much for this. Um, it was entirely unhelpful, but thank you nevertheless. We hit the mall to find out what people had to say. My review on the paper straws and the plastic, I would prefer plastic because paper straws will just wilt and uh, come apart within maybe a couple of hours. And since I drink a lot of ice caps, uh, within maybe two hours of my shift, it's all um, just falls apart basically and it just tastes terrible after that. One Saskatchewan MP says his family also hates the soggy straws. What inspired me about my private member's bill 380 was my two boys, and they hate the paper straw for milkshakes or Slurpees or anything. They suck. And my bill um, respects the science that has shown that um, paper straws are actually worse for the environment, worse for your health, and worse for our economy. That bill he mentioned? It's a private member's bill introduced in February that would delete plastic manufactured items from a list of toxic substances. Tucker and his fellow Conservative MP, Brandon Leslie, posted a video on the platform X to say getting rid of plastic straws makes no practical sense. While the straw may break down, this forever chemical is actually leaching into our environment and causing more problems than the plastic straws they're meant to replace. The MPs say a Belgian study shows paper straws actually have more forever chemicals in them than plastic straws, chemicals called PFAS that are damaging to human health. High exposure to these two major PFAS alone have been linked to high cholesterol, ulcerative colitis, pregnancy-induced hypertension, thyroid disease, testicular and kidney cancer, and decreased response to vaccines. Still, one professor who studies microplastics says that doesn't mean we should reverse a plastics ban. I would say we are now living on a plastic planet. Almost everything we come into contact with uh, each and every single day is made from plastic. And so uh, reducing it as much as we can is certainly uh, leading to meaningful change. Brinkman says people need to make better choices. After all, both types of straws both contain PFAS. So he says people would be better off if they're able to just ditch their straws entirely. Paper or plastic. Jenny Whitfield, CBC News, Regina. And that's it for us this week. For news anytime, you can head to cbc.ca slash sask or subscribe to our YouTube channel or download the CBC News app. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend.